Supreme Court grants local government financial autonomy. Bielsa community cries out over massive oil spill as communities protest destruction of farmlands. Jalingo residents decry surge in the price of perishable goods. On the foreign scene, minibus accident kills 12 school children and a driver in South Africa's Gauteng province. Good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. We we'll begin in Abuja as the Supreme Court of Nigeria on Thursday declared that it is unconstitutional for state governors to hold on to funds meant for local government administration. In its lead judgment, read by Justice Emmanuel Aguin, the Apex Court observed that on financial autonomy for local government has gone on for over two decades. Justice Aguin noted that the 774 local government areas in the country should manage their funds independently. He dismissed the preliminary objection of the defendants who are the state governors of the 36 states of the Federation. In the suit filed by the Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbemi SAN, the federal government sought an order preventing the governors from arbitrarily dissolving democratically elected councils. The suit by the Attorney General of the Federation was on 27 grounds. Justice Agim said the Attorney General of the Federation has the right to institute the suit and protect the Constitution. The Apex Court consequent, consequently directed that local government allocation from the federal from Federation account should be paid directly to local councils going forward. Let's speak to a legal practitioner now to get some insight on this development. Join us virtually is Abba Hikima, a legal practitioner based in Kano. Uh, Barrister, good afternoon. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, let me first of all get your impression or your understanding of this judgment from the Apex Court. Stated the Apex Court to uh, settle the long standing issue or tussle between the local governments in Nigeria and for time immemorial. Uh, or let me see, since the beginning of the Fourth Republic, you know, state governments have been withholding the monies of the local governments in spite of various previous decisions of the uh, Apex Court saying that these local governments should be autonomous, these local governments should have the financial autonomy and admi administrative autonomy they needed to function as democratic ent entities. So what the Supreme Court did today simply was to reaffirm the foundational principles which we have in the Constitution already, like Section 7 of the Constitution, Section 162, are all clear that Nigeria needs democratically elected local government system uh, and that they need all the autonomy they need to function as such. Right. Uh, clearly, uh, the, uh, the electoral part itself is something that uh, we're we'll waiting to hear uh, something uh, rather concrete about. But uh, as far as the Constitution is concerned, aren't there other components like the Joint Accounts uh, uh, Committee, for instance, at the state level that also needs to be expunged to guarantee this financial uh, autonomy that we're talking about? You see, if you ask me for my opinion, I would say that somehow the Nigerian constitution has contributed to the present situation that we find ourselves. Because if you look at section 162 of the constitution, that is where the state local government joint account has been created. And somehow, you know, the, uh, the constitution has handed, you know, the monies of the local government into the coffers of the state government. Because the state government controls rather directly, you know, the, uh, the state uh, accounts through which the funds of the local government goes into. And also, if you look at Section 7, Sub 6 of the Constitution, you would see that the state government somehow have been empowered to make laws for the structures and administration of the local government. So somehow, this has given the state government a an, 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 an hand over the local government. And this is what has created this situation initially. But right now, this, uh, there's a part of the ruling of the Supreme Court which says, these local governments should be given their monies directly. So if this anomaly, or if this mischief is, is corrected, then I would say that the beginning of a new Nigeria has started. And uh, 
we, we appear to be having a bit of a challenge uh, continuing that conversation with uh, Barrister Abdahikima on the Supreme Court a verdict affirming the federal government's position for local government autonomy going forward, uh, announcing that, of course, uh, it is unconstitutional for state governors to have some sort of control over local government uh, funding while declaring that uh, their funds for the local governments, the 774 local government areas, should be sent directly from the federation account to the local governments uh, going forward. We're going to have to leave it there uh, with Barrister Abbe Kima for now. But moving on. The Federal Executive Council is reviewing the Public Procurement Act to enhance more fiscal discipline in the country. The review follows on issues raised by the President on the need to reconcile between the Appropriation Act, a Public Procurement Law, and the Fiscal Responsibility Act. To this end, a committee under the chairmanship of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice has been set up to review Public Procurement Act in the country. State House Correspondent Kane Diamodu has more. Ministries, departments and agencies are being mandated to review their intended procurement as provided for in the 2024 budget. This is to identify gaps between appropriated sums and monies required to execute projects to clearly ascertain where funding is expected to come from. Department and agencies should review their intended procurement as provided for in the appropriation such that where there are gaps between appropriated sums and sums required to do the uh, to execute the project that can be brought to the attention of both the Ministry of Budget and National Planning and Federal Ministry of Finance. Recall that in the last 17 years, the National Council on Procurement has not really uh, been very uh, effective. So, Mr. President has submitted to the National Assembly uh, a bill which, in fact, has scaled through the first reading at the House of Representatives. The whole idea is to ensure that we have a robust National Council of Procurement. So even though some approvals were given to projects of some ministries, the cabinet stepped down others. There is a decision of the Federal Executive Council to step down some memos, especially those from the Ministry of Works, until the next Federal Executive Council meeting. Now, that idea is to re-examine, especially those parts that require augmentation or review. The information minister is still insisting that reports of there being a concession for LGBTQ rights in an agreement between Nigeria and Samoa were misleading. We just want to appeal. That is being taken up because we want to um, ensure that we give it all necessary, uh, you know, friendly attention <coughs> before we take any further step if it fails. I hope it doesn't fail. The cabinet has backed the information ministry's decision to seek redress by reporting the matter to the media industry's ombudsman. From State House Abuja, Kendi Amudu, Trust TV News. Our residents of Meiduguri, the Borno state capital, have described the integration of rehabilitated terrorists in communities across the state as a development that will engender peace in the northeastern part of the country. Now, this is coming after last week's integration of 560 repentant terrorists in their communities after an oath taken at the Hajj camp in Maiduguri. According to some of the residents who spoke to newsmen, the development indicates that reconciliation and forgiveness is paramount in stabilizing peace in the state. While advising some of the repentant reintegrated terrorists back to the society, to become peace ambassadors and engage in socioeconomic activities across communities, some of the residents also appeal to communities to shun stigmatization and retaliation. They also urge the government to sustain the initiative, saying it will help convince others to come forward and surrender. Let them partake and let them not differentiate themselves from the society. Let them be peace builders 
ambassadors of peace. Let's see the changes in them based on what they have gotten in the, in the camp. And for the government, we want them to take the implementation of the model seriously. They say when you, when you rehabilitate one insurgent, you take two members of the community to rehabilitate. We want the government to implement this strategy initiative fully. When a person commits a crime, admits their offense and comes forward to repent, it means the person has changed. At that point, if we don't forgive, it means we haven't forgotten and it is not good. Accepting them will encourage others to repent also. Therefore, I plead with people to embrace them because we are all victims of the insurgency. Elsewhere, women from Amini Boko, Egunugang, and Owere Owere communities in Abua local government area of River State on Wednesday staged a protest in Amini Boko community against the alleged destruction of their farmlands as a result of oil exploration by a Shell Petroleum Company. Now, according to the women, despite their being the host communities uh, to the company, they lack basic amenities like portable water, electricity, as well as healthcare facilities, among many others, while adding that the situation has been worsened by the destruction of their farmlands through oil spillage. Trust TV's Friday, Ebi Mubowe Peter, has more on the story. The women during the protest lamented that their means of livelihood have been destroyed as they can no longer work on their farmlands due to oil spillage. They call on the state government as well as Shell Petroleum Development Company Limited to come to their aid. See, within I'm all my sweat, I plan for my children to pay their school fees, but look at how water don't destroy everything finished. If I put this cassava now, nothing day inside. The rotting finish. May the concert to loss. May the concert to loss for waiting lost. Okay. It is where the happen here be say. Shell don't do don't wish us well well. They don't block the canal. They don't block the, the flow of water. We have water used to flow to the river. And now the water is flowing back to our farms. Hunger! Hunger, you can see! Oh, you can see this. Yeah. The farm, the, the cassava, the cassava don't rot in. It never reach up root. And it don't rot in cocoa, everything, granola, plantain, everything. It don't rot in finish. That is why we are here, crying the shell. Some of the protesters display the colored and polluted water they drink on a daily basis, lamenting that despite the adverse implication on their health, they have no other options due to the lack of potable water. We don't even benefit even, even the light, nothing we see. Water, nothing. And now, even the farm that we are doing to get something to eat, nothing we benefit. Now water don't come cover everything, spoil all our farms. Water, they don't already pollute the water. The water not good again. The oil you don't spoil the water. So now we just they manage it. Anybody where they pregnant, if you want to deliver now for a native, we they go because we not get hospital. I go, I go work for farm. The water don't spoil. The oil don't spoil. The cassava freeze. I don't know how I go do. All my body don't finish because for work. I no get money. I no get light. I no get everything. All my body don't go down. So now I make a they cry, God, may God give me with my village. Make it a cell. Come give me do what they the find and with my people, with my Sudan and the war. See the water, see the water. Oh, you don't spoil them. Oh, don't spoil them. See the water. Some of the protesters carry different placards with inscriptions like Shell, come and pay us damages for crops, among others. From Aminikboku Community, Friday, Ibimobowe Peter, Trust TV News. Well, this is the news update on Trust TV. Coming up ahead, Zalingo residents decry the surge in the price of perishable items. 
due to inflation. On this and many other stories up ahead after the break. Welcome back to the news. Let's take another look at our top stories. The Supreme Court has granted financial autonomy to local council areas in Nigeria. Bayelsa community cries out over massive oil spillage that has destroyed farmlands. On Wednesday, the Nigerian Senate mourned the passing of Honorable Olaide Odewale Akirami, a member of the House of Representatives, the All Progressive Congress. A lawmaker who represented Ibadan North Federal constituency of Oyo State died in the early hours of Wednesday after a brief illness. He was aged 52. First TV Senate correspondent Sagir Ibrahim has details. Prior to the suspension of legislative activities, Senate leader Senator Kwemi Bamidili had informed his colleagues that the Senate received communication from the House of Representatives notifying them of Honorable Akin Remy's passing. After observing a minute of silence in honor of the deceased lawmaker, President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, adjourned plenary to Thursday, July 11th, 2024. I'd like to announce notification of the demise of a member of the House of Representatives. Right Honorable Olaide Akin Remy Jagaban member representing a but not federal constituency of your state in the house of representatives honorable akin remis sudden demise occurred at the early hours of today wednesday 10th july 2024 after a very brief illness on behalf of the senate we condole with the family, the speaker, and members of the House of Representatives. Currently, the Senate is hereby adjourned to Thursday, the 11th day of July, 2024. Also, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, conveyed his deep sorrow over Akin Remy's death. Kaswan Gwari in Jalingo, the Taraba state capital, is one of the satellite markets located in Turaki A ward of the Taraba state capital, where perishable good items are sold in large quantities. Over the years, the market has built a reputation of becoming a hub for high purchases between traders and customers alike but the current economic reality in the country has exacerbated the cost of common commodities as traders and sellers continue to groan over the situation here's the report this market is always a beehive of activities as some buy to resell within the market while others buy in bulk for onward sales in other locations the chairman, Gwari Sellers Association of Nigeria, Taraba State Branch, Abdullah Hitijani, says prices of almost all the goods have skyrocketed recently due to delayed rainfall, cost of transportation, security threats, multiple taxation, as well as the high cost of herbicide. I see Targu, Tumatra, Albasa, Damakubewa. I sell at Gwari Market. I buy in small quantity and resell so that I can take care of my daily needs. The cost of perishable commodities have dropped a bit because the rainy season has started. We hope that in the future, the prices will go down below so that people can afford it. Pepe was sold at 100,000 Naira before, but now it is sold at 50,000. Although the cost of onion is yet to come down, but we are very hopeful. We want to appeal to the government to help us by ensuring that subsidies or palliatives get to the poor people. Some traders of tomatoes, onions, and pepper also admitted that delayed rainfall as well as cost of production have negatively impacted their operations, hence the need to make up through price increase. This market also provides an opportunity for many to earn a living, as some of the traders spoke to Trust TV News. The cost of vegetable has increased because of low yields from our farms. These perishable items have become scarce, 
so the prices have increased because demand is still high. Before, we used to get the produce from Bochi and Yola, but because of the shortages of the rainfall, they have become scarce. But the rain has started now, so we are very hopeful of the future. The major reason for the high cost of these perishable items is cost of transportation. On the side of the customers, they don't buy as much as they normally do because of the general hardship in the country, and we hope to see things improve in the near future. The word we will want now is full stop. All ingredients now I have reduced more, but our problem now for full stop to go down, even though small, people are dying, people are crying because of hungry. The chairman, Jalingo Local Council, Aminu Joro Hassan, confirmed that the new market under construction is almost 90% complete and promises to do more in order to boost economic activities across the council area. The government came with a vision and a mission of ensuring that at least it provides all the needed dividends of democracy to the team and populace. And uh, as a local government chairman who is saddled responsibilities of oversight, we also deem it fit that we should key in into the working modalities of His Excellency to ensure that our people are supported on the area of their trades and their businesses. Traders as well as consumers called on relevant stakeholders to intensify efforts geared towards making the goods more accessible and affordable to Nigerians. Let's turn to developments on the international scene and head over to South Africa where 12 children and their driver were killed in South Africa on Wednesday when their minibus overturned and caught fire on a road in Kauten province, according to official statement. The accident took place a day after schools reopened after the winter holidays. Seven other children were injured in the accident, which took place in the town of Merafong, west of the country's economic hub, Johannesburg. Reports say a small truck known as Baki had slammed into the back of the minibus transporting the children, causing it to overturn and erupt into flames. Gauten Education Department spokesperson Steve Mabona said 11 of the children who died attended Rockland's primary school, while the 12th child went to Les School in Clatonville. Now, thousands of school children in Gauten rely on private mini buses for transportation to and from schools across South Africa's most populous province. Quite a tragedy there. Elsewhere, Guinea-Bissau and China have agreed on Wednesday to elevate bilateral relations to a strategic partnership. This came as President Umaru Sisoko Mbalo was hosted by Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping called for bilateral efforts to strengthen exchanges and cooperation in education and youth for stronger people-to-people -people ties, while adding that China will continue to offer government scholarships and training opportunities to help Guinea-Bissau train more talents needed for its national development. The Chinese president said the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation is an important platform for Chinese and African people to implement the five principles of peaceful coexistence and promote development. Recalling that China marked the 70th anniversary of the five principles of peaceful coexistence in Beijing two weeks ago, Xi Jinping says the next FOCAC summit is scheduled for, the, for this autumn in Beijing. Mbalo is on, the, on a five-day state visit, which is scheduled to end on July 13. After their talks at the Great Hall of the People's Republic in Beijing, now the leaders witnessed the signing of bilateral cooperation documents in various fields, including the implementation of Global Development Initiative, the Economic Development, Customs Inspection, and Quarantine. Talking sports now. Newly acquired Super Falcons midfielder Jennifer Echegini says she is proud to be moving to the French women's team PSG Feminine. Now, the Paris based club on Wednesday announced the arrival of the Nigerian international on a four year deal from Juventus. While reacting to the move, the skillful midfielder expressed her excitement and promised to give her best to the team. 
Echegini is part of the Super Falcons team at the 2018 Olympic Games in Paris, France. That's it. The latest news update at this hour. We're we'll back with more a little later at 2. So feel free to check back. For now, follow us across our social media platforms to stay in touch. Also visit our website, trusttv.com, for the latest news and documentaries. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for watching.